five stocks to buy today at reasonable values. Let's get started. Stock number one, Disney. I own Disney, but like we always say, don't buy a company just because somebody on the internet owns it themselves. My play on Disney is very simple. You look at this profit margin, and it's 4% right now, 2.9 over the last five years. But if you go, and we go back here to the income statement before COVID, all the way before COVID, $60 billion in revenue and $13.5 billion in profit. $56 billion in revenue and $11.5 billion in profit. Way higher than it is today. My play on Disney is the fact that when margins go back to normal, this thing is going to print money. They're at record revenue right now. Look at this, guys. $90.67 billion in revenue. They have Disney Plus Streaming. Hulu, ESPN, all of these things are helping drive this number up and they're very high margin once they get stabilized. They're probably spending a lot of money currently trying to get users. But after they get their user, it's a very high margin business, which means every extra dollar they bring in is going to drive a ton of cash to the bottom line. If they're able to get to just 10% profit margin on this, you're to $9 billion in net income, but I have even better news for you. On a $200 billion market cap, that's a 20 times earnings. But this year, as they're still rebounding, they're expecting $8 billion in free cash flow, which is higher than the five-year average of 2.3 and 20% higher than the free cash flow last year of 6.8. So they are getting better. You have to be patient on this Disney play. If you like this, it's purely a play on these margins down here. That's what the play is all about. On their big revenue growth areas, Disney Plus and their streaming, they are driving the average revenue per user 6 or 7%. It's going to help those margins even more as you go down the road. Now, one thing I like that they did, they announced a $3 billion stock buyback. Now, guys, $3 billion on $200 billion is not a lot. I get that. But the fact they see their stock is cheap, which I agree with them on, buying back shares is adding more value to you. Now, they did reinitiate their dividend recently. I'd rather them keep that cash in and buy back shares. But I understand investors lost their dividends on, on, on Disney a while back. And the forward dividend deal is now 1.1%, which they can easily afford based on their free cash flow and their market cap. But again, the better use of the money is canceling that dividend, buying back more shares. They recently announced a 1.5% billion dollar investment in Epic Games, which makes Fortnite. And they're going to work with Epic Games to create content and new games for the brand and grow that from there. Now, one big risk on Disney is there are some activists out there and Bob Iger and the people at Disney have been saying, we don't need an activist investor right now coming here and trying to promote their agenda. Guys, for those of you who aren't aware what an activist investor is, it's someone who comes in, buys a lot of shares of the company and tries to get some sort of control, usually through, through a board seat or two, to try to enact the changes they think are necessary in the company. I'll be honest with you, I don't disagree. Let them get back to their margins. They're not operating at these margins here. It's one thing if they were operating at 15% margin and they were taking their cash and paying some monster dividend. In that case, I'd say, yeah, activists go in and encourage them to buy back shares. But I don't think that's really a big, con I don't think an activist should get involved right now, but that's just my opinion. So what is Disney worth to us? Well, let's pull up our stock analyzer tool and let's pull up Disney stock and the last time I did it. Now, guys, remember, I'm trying to make assumptions based on a 9% return. I usually put my margin of safety in here, but now I'm starting to do just a 9% return and let you determine your margin of safety because everybody's going to have a different margin of safety based on their understanding. But I think we can all agree that 9 or 10% is about the market average for returns on a company. So I did revenue growth of two and a half, five and a half, eight and a half profit margin. I kept it low at six, which is still above today, but growing six, 12 or 18%. PE, 17, 20 and 23. Same with the price of free cash flow. And again, 9% returns. We hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 110. Guys, we had a low price of 47, but remember that includes a 6% margin. We had a middle price of 130, a high price of 274. Guys, stock number two, Meta. The stock is down a little bit today. But guys, here's an exciting company. 
$1.22 trillion market cap and a $1.23 trillion enterprise value. That difference right there is a, merely, is a measly $10 billion in debt, net of all cash. In the last year, they did $44 billion in free cash flow. In the last five years, $29 billion. Now, they have $3.5 billion of the world's eight, eight, over 8 billion people using WhatsApp, Instagram, or Facebook. Now, one downside to Meta is their average time on their Facebook site is down significantly, but the higher revenue things like Reels and things like that are getting much more time and way more successful. I even find myself at night sometimes when I'm waiting for my wife to get ready, I find myself going to Reels and just scrolling right through. I really enjoy them. They realize I love comedy. They send me comedy Reels. That's a really good benefit for somebody like me, and I can get myself lost in there for 30 or 45 minutes. Now, obviously, when the stock hit a low of $88 a share, people were criticizing the company, criticizing Zuckerberg. This company is dead. And obviously, now the stock is up, people are saying otherwise. They have some headwinds. They are spending a lot of money on Realty Labs, their meta investment, but they're still able to grow this revenue and profit significantly. Look at that, $135 billion in revenue, $39 billion in net income against their $43 billion in free cash flow. Big return on invested capital and growing. This shows investors that they do a good job of investing the money in the business to get higher returns and drive up that in net income and free cash flow. And guys, look at these margins. 80.8% gross margin, almost a 30% profit margin, and potentially growing. They did almost a billion dollars in revenue in their Realty Labs, which is their metaverse which is $700 million higher. They, almost, they over tripled their revenue for the metaverse. Are they still losing money hand over fist? Absolutely, in that regard. Are they going to continue to lose more money? Absolutely. But guys, that's what I love about it. I'm not saying they're right or wrong on this, but if they really truly believe this is the future, take this cash flow for a spin. Go invest it in something that they can afford because this cash flow loss is after their meta investment. If they cancel their meta investment right now, this might go to $60 billion and growing. Now, one downside to, and it's not even a downside, their biggest potential is overseas. The average revenue per user overseas is significantly lower and can't be as high as we have here in the US right now. So even though they can drive a lot of revenue, it's not going to grow as fast as what they can drive here in the US. And the question is, are they already a little overexerted on that revenue side for the US? Maybe so. One negative I don't like about the revenue, in Q3, the number of impressions they served in ads across their services was up 31%. However, the average revenue was down 6%. So still overall an increase in revenue, but they're getting less per impression. And that's what I'm talking about there in terms of where are they expanding that revenue to. It's probably to lesser revenue areas. But I want you to focus on the fact they're still increasing the revenue overall and expanding their revenue per user overseas. That's where they're going to get their best growth. So again, I want to reiterate that the revenue is increasing. The impressions are increasing. But as they expand their geographic footprint of those ads, they're going to go to areas that aren't as lucrative. And that's why the charge per impression is down 6%. So the stock at a 52-week low of 167 and back on 11.4 of 22, sitting at $88, seemed like a pretty obvious thing to me. However, now with a surge from 88 to 467, the question is, is the margin of safety still there? So let's go take a look here at the stock analyzer tool and let's pull up Meta. We did Meta last on December 4th. And guys, again, I did the 9% returns, 5, 8, and 11% revenue growth. Might be aggressive. Let me be a little more conservative. Let's call 4, 7, and 10. I'm just going to go conservative here. But profit margin, 24, 28, and 32. Free cash flow. I kept the exact same thing. And I did a PE and price of free cash flow at the end of 10 years of 17, 20, and 23. We hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 461. Now, even though we have a couple reds here, I did decrease a few things, and I'm looking at this saying, guys, the big run-up so quickly, from a standpoint of, is it possible to run up that much and stay that way, might be take a little bit of a breather. We've seen the market overall be up 15 of the last 16 weeks. 
have yourself ready because if you like this company, be ready to start buying shares. It could become very attractive very soon. And I don't think my highest assumptions were that unreasonable. So having this 564 here is not some absurd number that's pie in the sky, in my opinion. Company number three, Target. Target's a company that I was dollar cost averaging into. Again, I own this, but don't buy it just because I did. I started at 135, saw it go all the way down to 100. 101.87 right here on October 6, 2023. And it has skyrocketed since then. It is currently at 145. That's after being down $4 today. Year to date, it's about even, but the last, last three months up 37%. My thesis on Target's very simple. This is a company that I think owns the women's market. Women love going there. It becomes a joke amongst people like, oh, my wife's great at budgeting and unless she walks into Target and then all of a sudden we're buying everything there. It's very true. It's a great experience for shopping. They're growing locations. They're contracting less profitable locations, which I like, especially in this world of online. But even better, I hear from a lot of women, they do a good job with their online delivery. Remember, retail isn't going away completely. It is changing. All the crappy ones will probably go away. I don't think Target's one of the crappy ones. One of the things I like about Target as well, these profit margins are actually pretty good. And I, I look at this saying, okay, they have a 28% gross margin. If they're going to be smart about their locations, being smart about the way they handle them, there's been a lot of theft and that's driven down the margins quite a bit. That's not going to be a permanent problem. I have a hard time believing that the theft problem we have in this country will not be figured out at some point. And Target is a well-known brand. Women love it. Women like to shop. That's where they're going to go. They just recently did a deal with Ulta, where Ulta is going to be in their st some of their stores. They have Starbucks in, in these stores. They're doing a good job of making the experience better and better for women and men who want to shop with their wives and girlfriends. Now, from a temporary standpoint, there is a lot of concern about the consumer. Yes, the consumer spending is strong, but there's a lot of debt coming on from there. I don't play those games. I look at Target and say, hey, if the stock makes sense from a long-term perspective, I will buy. If it falls further, I will continue to buy. That's why I was buying Target sub 105. I did not get it at the bottom. Maybe this isn't, this might not even be the bottom. We could have a further bottom than this. I have no idea. But the point is, if the stock makes sense, I will continue to buy if it makes sense to me. Now, one thing I'll talk about, they have this dividend right here. And it's a pretty healthy, healthy dividend, about 3%. Eats up a big chunk of their cash flow, $2 billion out of their five-year average of $3.7 billion. That's a pretty big chunk of their free cash flow. I'd rather see them buying back the shares when they're down to $100 a share. But that's the problem with dividends. It's hard to cancel dividends. When a company initiates a dividend, people fall in love with that. A lot of people are like, I love dividends. I'm a dividend investor. Well, what if there's a better use of the cash? How do you handle that then? And that's what I think Target has. So let's go to Stock Analyzer. Let's look at Target and see where it stands today. Last time I did it was January 18th. And again, I did a 9% desired return. I did two and a half, four and five and a half percent. This is way too low, but look at this five year, oh, sorry, in terms of revenue growth. You talk about new locations, you talk about inflation. You look at the saying, okay, with new locations and inflation, they should be able to get this because inflation alone being at 2 to 3%, that alone will get them that revenue growth. Margins. I put in three and a quarter, four, 4.75. This is probably going to be hard to get. This is probably going to be very unrealistic on the low side. That's why I'm comfortable with 4%. PE, I did 15, 17 and a half and 20. And guys, this is the one area these last three lines are where you as an investor really have to decide what's an appropriate multiple and desired return for yourself. That's why the software is so great for the users. And guys, if you want to check that out, everythingmoney.com, we have a free seven day full access trial. You get this amazing stock analyzer tool, unlimited access, and you get our community of investors, thousands of people in there. You can talk to you about Target, everythingmoney.com, seven day free trial. And again, I did my 9% desired return. Again, no margin of safety for myself here. I apply that afterwards. Hit the analyze button. Guys, I got a low price of 105, high price of 230, a middle price of 158. So this current price has a little bit of margin of safety. Question is how much is enough for you? A big company like this, the opportunities to buy it at a big margin of safety probably are few and far between. Could 101 have been the opportunity of a lifetime on target? Maybe, we have no idea. Stock number four, T. Rowe Price. Guys, T. Rowe Price is a bet to me 
on the U.S. economy and the stock market long term. Now, you look at this all-time high, October th- August 30th, 2021 of 204, hit a low a few months back of $86 a share. For those of you guys who love dividends, big dividend payer. Big dividend payer, 4.8% eats up a billion dollars of their 1.9 billion in free cash flow. Guys, this is a very, very large company. Very good five-year return on invested capital, not so great in one year. Guys, if the markets fall, this company will get hit. These guys rely on fees based on assets under management. When markets fall, the value of those assets decline. But again, I'm not here to try to guess where it's going. I'm making a long-term bet on the US economy and the stock market when I buy a company like T. Rowe. I have no idea when the bottom is going to occur, so I just make an investment when the money makes sense, and as long as my thesis is the same, I continue on with that. Guys, look at these numbers. 50% gross margin, 25% profit margin last year, 34% in the last five years. Guys, the benefit to this is long run, as they increase their assets and their fees go along with it, their bottom line is going to drive up big time. The downside is, if the markets fall heavy, their profit is going to plummet absolutely going to plummet. And that's a concern. Now, remember guys, whenever making an investment in any company, you have to have a long-term time horizon. There are amazing risks on this company, T. Rowe, based on what the stock market might do. It's had a great run in the stock market lately. 15 of the last 16 weeks are up. It's going to drive up their assets under management, which will drive up their fees. But the same can happen in the reverse. If we hit a bad bear market, hypothetically go down 40 or 50%, their revenue and profit's going to plummet and it will feel very scary. The question you have to ask yourself is, if you own the stock, do I believe in it long run? So let's go pull up what the long run says about the company based on our stock analyzer tool. Now guys, I'm actually gonna change this to a 20 year analysis. 20 years is a long time. However, for a company like T. Rowe Price, I would be shocked if it wasn't around 20 years from now. So I wanna kind of fact that in when I'm making this assessment. Now, 0% revenue growth, unreasonable. I'm going to do three, five, and 7% revenue growth. Okay. Profit margin. I went really conservative. I did 24, 28, and 32 on the 10 year analysis. I might go a little bit higher with 20 years, maybe 26, 30, and 34. Free cash flow. Um, I'm going to do, it's obviously a little bit lower. So I'm going to do 22, 26, and 30. I'm fine with that. Now, PE. I believe that T. Rowe is a leader. I believe with a good return on invested capital, they can justify a higher PE. So I'm okay paying 15 times on the low side, 17 and 19, and my net desired return of 9%. Analyze here. Now, remember, I want my margin of safety here because of the volatility involved, but I want it got to be disciplined to know that if it falls further, I'm willing to buy. Am I willing to buy this company if the price falls from 105 to 50? My answer is yes, as long as everything I've said here still is correct. I hit the analyze button. Guys, even at these low numbers, I have a low price of 100 to 120, high price of 250 to 278, middle price of 155 to 181. So if it falls further, these returns here, based on the current price, are just going to keep going up and up. But you've got to be ready for volatility. The final stock, another stock that, and by the way, I do own T-Roll price. Southwest Airlines. Guys, the airline industry is one of the hardest industries to make money in. But Southwest, before COVID, had something like 48 years in a row of profitability. It's one of the only airlines to never go through a bankruptcy. It's been profitable since day one. They do a great job hedging the number one cost they have, which is, which is gas. And they stick to the exact same planes, all 737s. And they stick to regional routes they can make money on. Not the biggest revenue generator but they do a good job of profitability. And just like Disney, my play on this is, is as such. Look at this profit margin, 1.2 and 1.8% over the last five and one year. But let's go look at times before COVID. Before COVID, 22 billion in revenue, 2.3 billion in profit, over 10%. Okay, the, the year before that, 2.5 billion on 22 billion in revenue, over 10%. I'm looking at this saying, okay, This is another margin play. They had the issues with their computers. They had their 737 max issues a few years back. There's been a lot of headwinds on their profitability that they're working to fix. Do I think Southwest will be around for a long time? Yes. Do I think their margins will be better than 1.2 or 1.8%? Yes. Do I think they'll be closer to double digits, if not higher? Yes. 
So the question is, can I be patient and wait for it? Well, let's pull up the stock in our stock analyzer tool, Southwest Airlines. Now, they have rev record revenues right now, right? But two, four, and 6% revenue growth seems reasonable. I have already noticed that travel has gotten more expensive. People are, airlines are charging more for travel. I just bought my future steps on a, a ticket from, from Dallas to Cleveland round trip, and I was shocked about how much the ticket was. Cheapest form of, cam, of, of uh, coach. And I was just like, how is, it this, how is it this expensive? But it was. Profit margin. I kept on the low side, 7%. High side 13, middle side 10. Guys, I could see somebody going higher than 10 and 13 here. Because even on their decent years, they were doing over 10%. So can they get 15 to 20 as they grow? Maybe so. PE, 15, 18, 21, only because I believe in this company in the airline industry. And I'm going to change my desired annual return, like we said, to 9% across the board. Hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at $32 a share. Guys, I have a low price of 40, high price of 125, middle price of 75. Again, guys, if you want to run these on your own and talk to our community members, everythingmoney.com, free seven-day full access trial. Thank you for your time.